Okay, well here we go. Drawings on the board. Go, first thing I'm going to use a, uh, a mop brush. Now I'm going to start off with the blue sky, which is going to be cobalt blue with a touch of Windsor blue in there. Just to get us off to um, a blue start. And I'm going on to dry paper. And I'm going to start off on the left first. Like that. I'm going to pick around the weather vane as best as I can. And down that side of the tower. And I'm using the same colour down this side of the tower. Now holding the line if I can. There we are. So that's damp the paper. And whatever you do there, you continue through. That way, you're not getting a separation of lines. Now, as I go over to this side, I've added a touch more water to the mix. And I'm going on to dry paper, so you've just got to keep it, keep it flowing, keep the water flowing. A bit more water <clears throat> as we head towards the, what will be the sunlit part of the sky. And also the lower part of the uh, sky on this side, which will be behind those trees. So we don't want uh, that to be too, too dark. There we go. Pull that down there like that. That down there like that. And we go around there like that. Brilliant. Right. Keep that nice and wet there good and then as we thin the paint this side and paint down I'm going to introduce clean the brush I'm introducing cadmium lemon and a little And a little, let's start off just with cadmium lemon. There we go. And then I'm going to add a little of the cadmium red. A little bit of cadmium red, quite a lot of cadmium red gone in there. Well, that's interesting. And spread that across into that blue area. Okay. And then the cadmium red can then be lightly put in into the lower part of the sky it's meant to be a summer's morning so consequently a summer sky is put a little bit that side as well just so as it blends uh, can have a little bit of warmth in the lower part of the sky and we finish on top of the building like that and we come down like that brilliant now we use a little bit of Windsor blue now and I say a little bit it's going to be quite strong up in that top area there and down as we come across around there again that area there gently into that now we can then pick up the side of that again just before it dries vital if you're going to do this sort of thing to try and work across before it dries and then work across another area there there we are <clears throat> and then we're going to put a, another quite strong area of blue there which is always a good thing to do so we've got a, the fennel of light there we are then to get this sky to come off, I'm going to roll the brush across the paper like that to create the illusion of the odd cloud. So and that goes off behind that tree there and another little area there. See the way I'm rolling the brush across the paper? Um, just pull that down there so it blends quite nicely and I'm just going to put another one there just to make it 
seem as if it's um, sort of all legit, if you like. Here we are. Good, and while I've got a bit of blue on, I'm putting a little bit of blue rolling in there as well. There we go. Look at that. And that's all you need to do for the sky to start with. Now mop these areas away. Now as we head down into the distance here, I'm going to add a little raw sienna to that uh, blue. So a little raw sienna to give me sort of some a feeling of some distant sort of tree areas, possibly. A bit more raw sienna gone in there. Uh, perhaps a bit of tree work. There are some trees behind this building that may we may need to show uh, and not on the drawing but um, it's uh, not a bad place to have them there we go look at that so they are the areas behind the um, add a bit more red to this this area here behind behind those uh, the more foreground trees there we go look at that that seems to work quite well I think that's all sort of coming off nice and loosely and then as we head down behind there we're getting a little bit sort of bluey green quite blue for greenery that's in the distance behind these other trees there and there right but then quickly we clean the brush and then we start to pick up the nice warm tones of the summer greens uh, there Um, and they're yellows there try and get a glint of light which will be between the trees underneath really nice crisp bit of light on top of that tree there that's it good and of course a nice bit of warmth around where this gate is we have got some hedging and tree work there but it's going to be nice and light there we are that's good <coughs> now as we come down into the main foreground we can use some real sort of uh, yellowy warm yellowy tones um, there and there summer that's what we're looking for a summer feel nice warm yellowy tones there look create a bit of a track towards the church but just get these warm yellowy tones in first right and once you get those in you then clean the brush then you pick up some light red to create a bit of an illusion of a track there like that then we have a little bit of burnt sienna just stroked in here and there just to show a little bit of undergrowth like that coming to a more flatter area now and then just before it dries we use cadmium yellow and winter blue not too dark at this stage but always nice to have a bit of depth of tone here and there where we're going to have some hedging and some trees there we go look at that and you'll find this an, an immense uh, makes an immense difference to 
the finished painting if you can get some of these in in the early stages. Get those in in the early stages of your painting. It will make an awful lot of difference. Do a bit more yellow first there for the backdrop of that and where that hedge meets that. That's it. That's looking good. And uh, virtually there. A little bit stronger tone here. Down in this bottom right hand corner. And down there as well. Good. Let's lift that away so it doesn't run back. Okay. Well, I think that needs to be left to completely dry. Right, now I'm going to paint the tower. Now that's completely dry, I'm going to paint the tower and I'm using the mop brush with a point this time. <clears throat> and we're just looking for a grey, really, you know. Um, a touch of ultramarine blue with a little. Cadmium red and a touch of yellow in there. And I'm looking for more of a blue grey, so the yellow would be any could be any colour, but the blue grey, I'm using ultramarine for the blue. And uh, <clears throat> right, we start off going down the back edge here. Right, yep, that's about right. So then we can go right the way down, leaving just a bead of white on that front edge perhaps. But overall, we'll go right the way down and use that as our main colour. There we are. So that's the tower going in. I like the idea of that colour, that seems to be working quite well. There we go. And we finish that sort of area there. There we go. So that's the tower in. Bead of white on the top. Bit of angle at the base there, which this has like supports for those pieces of architectural detail that stand up in each corner. <coughs> Good. Now we clean the brush thoroughly. And we've got to get our first colour onto the church itself. We're going to do the brickwork first. So I'm using raw sienna with a touch of lemon, cadmium lemon in there. Because we've used it before, so we might as well use it again. So it's a nice sort of dull yellow colour to start with. <clears throat> And what we're going to do, we're going to paint the complete church like that. Well, most of it anyway. So those areas that stand up there like that, they're going to be painted in that. And we're going to go down the back edge as well, although that will be in shadow. But we're going to keep it all with this sort of toning in. And because it's an old church, we don't mind if we leave one or two little areas unpainted. You know, uh, it's not vital that uh, everything is painted perfectly. And I'm hoping to pick up the glow of the sun on these, on this brickwork. That's the idea of getting that in fairly quickly. <coughs> so that's the start of the church. Now we're going to look at the roofing. <coughs> And I'm going to use light red with cadmium red. Now the cadmium red really gives a vibrant red. So I've got to be a bit careful. I shall put a bit of raw sienna with that just to make it slightly orangey. Don't want to be too powerful. Um, don't want it too dark, but it is darker than the brickwork. 
and I'm going to start off with this part of the roof leaving just a, a hint at possible um, ridge tire work at the top there which there will be probably put that in that shows lighter on the original but I think I'm going to put it in darker and then we're going to do this one here and whatever red you use for the for that part of the roof work you must use for this because if you don't it won't look right there we are that's that and then I'm putting a bit of cap lemon yellow with it for this area because that faces the sunlight now that may affect the color so I'm going to assume it does like that <clears throat> then a little touch of burnt umber just to darken it off for this back edge here Still wants to have a reasonable, so a bit of burnt umber in there. There we are. So it's a little darker. This area here. This is part of the church that runs behind there. Crazy goes behind that uh, tree area there. And that stands down there. Not as so sure as we can actually see a little bit of the wall there. So maybe I should finish it there and put a bit of wall in underneath shortly. <clears throat> While I had this red, not too much, but a little, we'll go a little bit of red detail around the top of the gothic windows. Slightly gothic. I'm going to give them a bit of a point then. Uh, just a touch there, although that's all going to be in shadow. Uh, <clears throat> yes, there's some red brick work around there. Like that. Good. I have to keep reminding myself it's not an architectural drawing. It's uh, got to be, got to remain fairly, fairly loose, fairly free. And then I'm going to put some nice red capping because I can see that um, <clears throat> particularly on there some lovely red capping it's probably a little too strong but we'll uh, we'll let that and it's quite uneven at the top then I'm going to put a touch of that there a bit of the old red capping and then a little bit here along that bit and there there we go and just along there now that will bleed in probably so will that um, but that's not a problem <coughs> good and just so as that takes away and, and blends a bit I'm dampening underneath so it sinks in to the roof line underneath that way it takes away from the worst of the redness and yet spreads it through. There we are. So we get a softer feel to the ridge tile. Uh, while we have this nice red, we're going to put the chimney there. A bit of a cap the other side of that chimney. Um, is there any other red brick work? I know there is in the lower part of the building. But um, possibly along there. Yep. That's it. <coughs> Good. Now with a slightly smaller brush, <coughs> I'm going to do the uh, window areas. I'm going to use um, ultramarine blue with a touch of cadmium red mainly blue but they are very very dark so but we don't be too dark at this distance you know we've got to remember that 
We've got light on this building, but it doesn't want to be too dark. Now, this is the belfry tower, uh, the belfry windows. And I'm putting some cross sections like that, like that, not counting them. Um, and this, these will almost show just a, a line, really. Uh, this window here, that will have not a great deal of um, detail. Um, we have a window here that uh, has it's quite an ornate sort of feel to it. But then we have one, two, three sections. And they may go down a little lower than that. May not have quite gone down far enough, but um, that's good enough. Yep, <clears throat> it's all about light. It's not all about um, detail. <clears throat> the weather vane, while we've got the chance, while we've not got, we've got a bit of bluey green here, because that's the colour it is. Very light bluey green. So it's a bit blobby. So let's just lift some of that away. There we are. Um, <clears throat> Good, good, good. That's coming along quite well, I think. I don't think there's any major problems there at all. So far, so good. Now we're going to put in a little bit of tree work now. I'm going to start off with this one stands back, so it's a bit more distant. So we're not going too strong with the colours. I'm going to use ultramarine and ultramarine and cadmium yellow. Um not going to go too, too green with this because it is, it's going back a bit, you know. A uh, fair bit of cadmium, it is a summer's day, so I don't want to be too, um, too dark with this. <coughs> and um, certainly not too, too much on the brush. I'm going to use the side of this brush and just drag down to try and get the feeling of leafing in the distance lifting off a touch the top and if you can get this right first time then you have a better chance of producing a more believable tree really you know that's my opinion and the su in, in the summer it's quite dense but there are gaps here and there so don't be afraid to leave the odd gap or two like that there we go and you work your way down and this I'm not sure whether it stands slightly in front of that gable end or behind it so I best use a bit of license and just leave it as it is <clears throat> now it's going to go a little darker add a little brown to that and a little more blue that will give you a darker and let's add a little Windsor to that because it gives a, a more darker feel just before it dries if you can just catch it on the undersides of these branches particularly at, you know in the lower part but also around the right hand side but mainly over the left hand side because that's where the darker deeper tones will will actually be <clears throat> don't want to make this too uniform so I'm using there again a bit of license just hitting that tree goes out then it comes back then it goes out again a bit like that that's it good and then a little darker now Raw Sienna and Windsor Blue. That will still give us a nice dark, but it won't be too powerful. Be a bit more of a solid colour. I don't want nothing too powerful in this lower area. And a bit of a bit of open area at the base where the branches hang down perhaps. Um maybe perhaps that does just slightly cross that uh that gable end there that would be nice I think if it did shows a bit of um, 
bit of closing down of that area but that's not a major problem good and then we go straight in with the burnt umber into that green so we get a green brown for uh, the trunk work well, we're going to see a little bit of trunk work at the base not a great deal bit there as well not going to actually see where it sits on the ground this one it's going to be behind there and then the point of the brush will then give you the opportunity to show some smaller branches running up into the canopy and away another branch there and then one or two other branches there that split and quite a few branches at the top they have to be very small and it's not a bad idea to get them in while it's still a little damp because they tend to amalgamate better with the uh, with the tree that's my experience anyway that's good <coughs> That's lovely. Right, in the lower area of that, I'm going to introduce, while that's still damp, I'm going to introduce a bit of nice greenery that will in effect be the tops of part of the greenery in front of what will be a, probably a little bit of a hedge area, I suppose. So that then comes along like that. And then we have tones within that. Not too much around there because that's where the gate will be. So then we show up the top then of what will be just a bit of undergrowth and shrubbery around there. We are, and the tree sits in something. That's the key to it. It's not, you can't see quite where it sits, but it's, it's softened. <clears throat> right, now we have a larger tree here, which I'm going to make a little darker. Um, and this time I'm going to use the Windsor Blue with the Lemon Yellow. So it gives you quite a brilliant green that, but you can tone it back with Burnt Sienna. And that will give you quite a nice subtle green. Um, not too dark. I said dark. But I'm not going too dark initially. Because I want that to be a reasonable sort of summery green. But these trees do look quite dark in the even in the summer. Particularly when they're against the sky. Which this one will be. Now the large trunk is there. It sits about there. So it's a little f further forward than that. And start off in the centre of your tree like that. And then once the brush sort of points up. Now how much is going over the... And that's got a sort of one of those trees. Not quite sure of the strata. But um, it's one of those trees that sort of have little areas that are a bit more open at the top. And may have one area just coaxing the top of that um, church like that. But I'm not going to do too much to that. Now it's going to be a little darker because we're going around on the left hand side. Like that. <clears throat> a bit there. And a little bit dense, a little bit more density to the, to the mix. Putting a few more branches to the left so that we're not leaning too much towards that area. Brilliant. Now I'm going to add more blue, more brown, a bit more blue. Yep, not any more yellow at this stage. And just before we hit the lower part, I'm going back in as I did there to try and get some, some uh, under branch shadow that's what I call that under branch shadow 
always a good thing to do. Particularly on the left hand side because that's in, in theory that's where all the shadow would be. But of course there will be some in the um, in the lower part as well and on the right. But there you go. There we are. Quite earthy, but uh, it's all looking quite good. A bit more blue in there now, because that will really make it dark. And I don't want too much impeding on that uh, church tower at this stage. Got a bit of light on it, so I don't think you'll be able to see too well because of the... Once it dries, you'll get the, the gist of it all. Just trying to do a bit more to these outside edges on the left hand side. Not a great deal. It's it's sunny, but it's not a great deal. Can't see too much of those um, uh, of those sunny areas that side. Good. And then I think we will find that we can now go even darker. So just blue and brown to create sort of like an overhang where the trunk will be and there again we're not going to see too much of the trunk there we go good just drop in a couple of dark areas there one there uh, another one there and a little bit there just to show a bit of variation in those trees good okay let's now just put in the trunk and that I'm going to use more or less a grey really greeny grey trunk not sure whether this will work but anyway it probably won't so add a bit more brown with that there we go so there's the main trunk we have a large branch coming off there and there again this is going to sit into the ground it's not going to um sorry it's going to sit onto greenery underneath so the way we do that, as we did before, we <coughs> take some yellow, weak yellow colour, not too much water, and we show, we soften that into what will be the tops of another area of bushes or greenery. Like that. There we are. And then while we've got a bit on, on the brush, because I like that, I'm going to put another little area there. It's delicately tinting at this stage. And that's a nice sort of colour, I think. A bit more, bit more raw sienna in there, so it's not too... For sort of like the left-hand side of a another little tree there but I want to leave that open so there's a little tree there All right and then we have another one which is sort of a bit more, more brilliant green perhaps and a little darker this is another thing Lights against darks, darks against lights. So this one is darker now. And that goes over there like that. <coughs> yep. And to get a rounded shape, all you do is take a damp brush and spread that across. And all of a sudden you get sort of like a rounded feel to the greenery without being too sharp edged that's good 
and some slightly darker stuff touches on the left hand side here just as it overhangs into that light area and of course down in the lower area the underside that's always the darker area that's it a bit more brown now just to with the blue just to darken that off along that bottom edge and then we can then use that to stand up and create sort of like a little another little shrub area not you know not concerned what they are they're just um, other areas of greenery that um, will hopefully enhance the overall look yeah yeah I like the idea of that and then that another little because you've got to remember there is allotment area here so it may be that we can see a little bit of growing from the allotment but that's only uh, what I'm assuming uh, by far uh, doesn't certainly need to be the case good 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 now we can then go over to a lemon yellow for this area here and just head off into that darker colour and then in front of that tower it's going to be that to gable end it's going to turn dark again and this time I'm going to darken it up with burnt sienna just to ring the changes so it's not all greens and the same greens here we are so that's a lovely feeling of lights and darks then we have some greenery here it's going to be a more fresh green this now so let's look for a, a fresher sunlit green it's all, all playing with greens really that's the thing that will make or break this picture and let's hope it doesn't break it let's hope it makes it and we're going to go up high there don't want to, uh, don't want to keep it too linear That's nice. <clears throat> that is very nice. Then as we head down, we just soften that in places to pull that colour down into this lower area where the gate will be. So it's all nice and soft before we get to the gate area. You can just see where that field finishes then, there. Then we should put a gate into that and that will be pretty much um, um, a good uh, sort of f give a lovely feel to that really. A bit more of this darker colour on certain edges. Just to give a feeling of greenery into that. You know a little bit of licence used but that's the nature of painting. You know, um, that's good. Then, of course, we come some dark edges there where you can see the gable end, which is in sunlight. Yeah. And I'm going to use a bit of burnt sienna just sneaking across the bottom there to give a hint that there is some little things going on in amongst but that's where the gate will be anyway so we've got to be a bit careful that's why I've softened it made it more sort of um, blurred what a blurred behind the gate now I'm moving along this there's, there's a nice damp area there so I'm dropping that in there is going to be a small sort of like a hedge area there I think so that's going to work well for that 
um, and then we go up like that into that data still nice and damp so it's bleeding up quite mystical then I'm taking a lot of paint off the brush because I want to show some little touches along there that will blend with that and I need to soften those because that's now dried but if you damp it up you all of a sudden get a nice little soft area again so plenty of softening underneath that tree don't get too fussy with this but it's nice to have that sort of feel and then a bit more water a bit more yellow and all of a sudden we've got a lighter mix again just for finishing off that side and just sort of getting a, a sense of distance trees again somewhere there we do have a large sort of tree to come in there but let's just put another sort of tree area in there that's looking good yes that's and we're going to do a similar sort of thing to this side really um might as well use that colour actually because that seemed to work and that will help to balance it really um, but a sense of a distant tree in there perhaps yep and the paper's still a little damp so that all goes well for that particular passage now we're going a little darker so a bit more brown in with the blue, a bit more cadmium, just to darken that little area there. Just underneath that where we've just painted. And there again, we can soften that to give that sort of like a sort of more summery sort of soft feel. brilliant now all we're going to do is attend to the foreground really and uh, all we need to do with that this will have a bit more texture now I'm not using the large brush now at this stage I'm going to use a smaller brush but not too small <coughs> I'm going to use this is a number 10 but it doesn't point particularly well and um, I'm going to keep another brush, smaller brush at hand because I may need to soften areas and I'll show you what I mean when I get there right now Windsor blue cadmium yellow mainly cat you know quite a bit of cadmium yellow there don't want too much of the Windsor blue at this stage we will do but not at this stage and we're going to show some texture now we've not got a great deal of texture in the background so now we can actually show some textured areas particularly in and around where we have those lighter areas see where I've done that? and then remember I said about the brush I'm going to soften the undersides here and there so that you get hard and soft edges. This is the same bit more burnt, bit of burnt sienna now. There we are, that's what I like. Little bits of red going in. Don't go too dark too early. We can always go one tone darker, but we've got to be careful we don't go too dark too early and then we spread that across like that <clears throat> and we'll do the same here and as you come forward you can begin to get be a little bit bolder with those marks because this is where you get the fennel of sunlight and I'm just 
trying to get a rough little fiddle of a track there totally out of character with this sort of place not out of character but not what you'd class as uh, you know it is where it is but a little bit of license used because I don't want to be to depict it as um, I want to depict it more as a as a summer foliage scene in front of the church you know but it is there but it's um it's slightly different to what i'm doing but um that is not a problem okay now we leave a gap where it's nice and soft now we can as i say we can bring up some nice little green you know nice little shrub areas maybe a small shrub there and then we soften the underside of that even soften some of the parts inside of that as well and there again pull that across so that introduces itself into the landscape um, another area there or in another area there now we don't want to do too much to this that's it there we are drag it across rub it in with your finger um, yeah let's soften that again underneath we'll leave that hard edge but soften it as it comes through to there that's looking nice now here we start to get a little darker um, because we're going to have some shadow here so we have a lovely feeling of some sort of shrub just there there is some laurel in the foreground of this painting so maybe that is the bottom of that laurel that's standing up higher which we will depict shortly and the same goes this side now let's use a slightly different color to that um, i'm going to use raw sienna and cadmium yellow with a touch of windsor blue and so we've got a, a shrub area there there again we've got some text some um, foreground sort of greenery to go in there but at this stage I'm only just gonna indicate the, that we have sort of like a that sort of shrub coming in <coughs> good now lemon yellow going into that now as I say ring the changes um, just a little bit more water so that we get more solid tones like that yep now I'm going to go considerably darker and that means more brown and more blue winds are blue and burnt sienna don't want too much on the brush but needs enough to nice and dark in that bottom left hand corner to show grasses I'm trying to introduce the common area really into this area where the church is so you know it's a it's a compilation I think is probably the best um, word uh, that I could um, give to this uh, uh, the way this um, the way I'm treating this lovely 
let's just uh, let's just sit back and see how things are going, and uh, we'll have a short break and let's see um, what we end up with. Well, now moving forward, before we put any shadow work on the building, I want to put in. We've got a dark laurel tree there, and this is going to be. Windsor Blue with the red I'm going to use will be Indian Red because that way we get so like a it's not a green but it's a very dark sort of um, feeling of of leafing from the laurel that's what I'm looking for just check that's not too dark for the for the overall picture just what we've got to watch out for because it can soon be off putting let's add a bit bit of uh, bit of yellow to that so it's it turns up a bit more green let's add a bit of yellow to that that's better that's what I'm looking for that sort of dark sort of green and then we just open that up at the top not going as high as that large tree don't want to hit that large tree if I can help it but it's got to be more of a local color than the large tree there we are And then when you put branches to that, all of a sudden, it began, begins to make sense. We head down into this lower area where the paint is still damp. So, you end up with a soft feel around the base, which is okay. Then I'm just going to have one or two little areas just stringing in the top there. So we'll put some uh, branches to that shortly. And they just spread out like that. Just to give a little bit of a nice little f uh, feel on that left. And we're going to do a similar sort of thing here. But we're not going to make quite so much of that because too much of a good thing too much that side you know if you've got a lot that side don't have exactly the same this side otherwise the balance goes out to balance these things similar sort of thing but there again, a little bit denser this one and it just hangs down there like that here we are that seems to work for me okay well that's all nicely dry now now I'm looking to put in some details I'll put in the gateway first going to use a small pointed brush for that um, Gate openings are always interesting when you have this sort of subject. Um, and I would recommend if you're going to, you kind of just have the, the, the opening. But um, if you're going to have uh, put a gate in, have the gate slightly open. So that it gives you the impression that you want to walk through. I'm going to use burnt umber for this. And a touch of ultramarine, not too much. Don't want to overload the brush and uh, just put in the gate posts quite freely quite loosely and I'm going to have a bit of fencing because we do see that a little bit here in this position only just suggested quite um, quite a bit of license used in this because uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to combine the feeling of the common 
uh, with the church and trees now the trees are there the, this sort of that's the allotment area but I'm using the, the, the new open area here uh, to depict uh, like part of the common really so um, that uh, uh, gives a bit more of an authentic feel good um, now I'm going to use this colour too for darkening this tree that sits there <coughs> so we've got the sunlit lit side and then the shadow side I'm just going to use a damp brush just to soften that just so as it doesn't look hard edged there we are it just helps to give that a little bit more sort of um, uh, bit more depth if you like <coughs> good Okay then, now we're going to look at shadows. Well, for the shadow on the tower of the church, the, the spire, I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue and cadmium red. And I'm going to come down the back edge to start with. There's sections on this tower. Now that stands in front, so I'm going to leave that and allow that to show underneath as if it's coming across the front of the tower. There we go. Nice colour blue that for, for shadows. That's good. And I'm also going to put that same colour into the second area there but that's not quite as dark then you'll be able to see sections then i'll go over that with a with another dark tone shortly good <clears throat> so that's that we do have a little belfry area here which i'm going to just uh show where the um where it actually sits there and then take a bit of colour off and just put in the the louvers for that just just suggesting that really uh, because it is there but I don't want to over overdo that okay now we're going to do the back edge of the church now this is going to take a little more red bit more cadmium red give it a slightly warmer feel as opposed to because we're looking for the brickwork shadow and that area there is going to be in complete shadow that's it and so is that area there it's going to be in a lot of shadow too maybe a glint of light there then we come down the back edge with a bit of a point to it there. that's it and we come down that back edge and we just leave a little glint of light in places just to gently just you know it just gives a bit of interest well, that's what i think anyway and i'm only using a small brush here but if you notice i've got it well loaded so always load your brushes fully because if you don't, then you end up running out of paint. There's nothing worse than running out of paint in a shadow area. Or any area, really. And just work your way down like that. That's good. It's looking good. And we finish where it meets the trees. And all of a sudden we've got a feeling of sunlight catching the front of that uh, tower. Now, the, the belfry window would have a little bit along the top, but most of it would be down, most of the shadow would be down the right hand side. So, we'll dry up considerably lighter than that. I may need just to lift that off because I'm 
got a brush here that's well loaded which um <coughs> oh and there would be a shadow there on that buttress so you know oh and there on that small little part of the church there that's it down the left hand side of that buttress too but at this stage I'm not going to paint the right I'm assuming that perhaps that's in sunlight still but we'll wait and see on that when it dries we'll be able to see exactly what we've got not being too dark with the shadow trying to keep it a little bit conservative at this stage because the deeper shadows I want here so that the church sits back right now we do this a lovely chimney area a couple of chimney pots there and just watch we don't get it too large and also just watch when you paint these sort of chimneys that you try and keep them upright and in the right position um, you know I'm not as I always say I'm not a painter that likes to paint architecture particularly um, um, like an architect's drawing that's not my style at all I'd prefer it to be looser and freer so you know that that's what I try and depict uh, whether it actually completely comes off every time well probably not but that's uh, that's life with watercolour painting uh, there's an area under the roof line there that's got to be painted and just drop down keep it uneven along that edge because it is tree work there oh and there's an area of the overhanging roof line there and you may see a little bit there too there we are <coughs> and a little bit on the front edge of that I may lift a bit of paint off there later on but we'll see how we go we do have a little shadow from because this is early morning the sun would be in this sort of position in the early morning well there would be it's quite low so there would be a bit of shadow there there'd also be a little bit of shadow on that back edge there yep that's looking quite healthy um, then under the gutter there gutter line there we also have a buttress area there right that's got sunlight and then this buttress would then cast a shadow onto the wall like that although it's in sunlight it will cast a shadow onto the wall so that makes it look as if it stands away then we do have some shadow here just pick around the leaf work if you can because it's uh, always a good thing to do and then of course this window has shadow just like the belfry window so that also has a bit of shadow uh, no windows there no windows there that we can see that's good okay yeah that's uh, that's now brought the church into some form of sunlight which um, you know it's the sort of thing that uh, really brings a picture to life I'm now looking at the more middle distance area where there's likely to be shadow I'm gonna to have to make this up a little um, and but at the moment it's still quite subtle but of blue in there not too dark with this now obviously that tree would or could cast a shadow over that area there underneath it will be a bit dappled and down there like that there's all sorts of things going on here um, and as it hits that area there 
it's quite likely take a bit off the brush that we're going to get a little bit of shadow running up across that area there across there down there it just gives an added bit of interest really to that there just as if that that tree is casting a small shadow and we'll take it up over there too because you've got to remember it's a low sunlight and um, you've got to get that film of dappled light hitting that that roof line there we go and if you can just take a breath and just put it on it does give a bit of subtlety a bit of interest to these subjects good yeah I think we can safely say that that's uh, been quite successful uh, that will also run to the back there but not any further than that because that's more foreground there we are just a bit more dappled there good now um, we may have a little bit of a shadow then um, on the left hand side of that now this is going to be softened in a moment and I'll show you what I mean by softened because it's quite often when I say that people th say well what do you mean well all you do is take a damp brush and only a lightly damp brush and that creates a rounded feel to what otherwise would be very hard edged shadow so it's it's because it's behind this gate I want to I don't need too much interest around that sort of area there we are that's better just you know gives a bit of a bit of an interest anyway um, then you may very well have small shadow there some of these can be more hard edged um, but don't want that too dark against that light top there there we go that's it showing you different sections of this um, You can even show the outside edge with your shadows of of this uh, tree or small shrub or whatever it is, you know. Um, that's the way you enhance this type of subject. Well, so you've created a rounded feel to that shrub and of course you'll do the same well I will anyway to this area because that's our only distance really that's all blocked off so the eyes led towards that area that's what I'm hoping to um, to achieve and by putting a really dark feel there and then just dot it around a little bit and there again you can soften if you wish not too much on this one. You want to have a bit of light in between those uh, dark areas. But basically, a um, bit of a puddle of paint there. Let's just lift that off. There we are. Um, yeah, that's uh, pretty much as I would have expected. Um, oh, while we have this brush, I'm just going to put in, we never quite put the cap of that in uh, that's got a little bit of detail there is just watch I don't touch the wet paint there is a little bit of interest here along that edge there we are just a little bit of architectural uh, detail and then just soften it underneath because that just gives it a feeling of a lip uh, which there is um, not looking at too much detail that's the key once you add too much then you're not going to get the uh, desired effect 
good so that's that's worked out well that's all those soft subtle uh, shadows um, put in that's it right now we're looking at the more foreground shadows now I'm going to change brush here and use this slightly larger brush but also keeping another brush handy for softening which can enhance the picture immensely now we have to be careful where we put other shadows going to use the same two colors may as well stick with that for the time being um, going to be a little bit stronger now with this shadow um, because we're coming in to the more foreground area and that tree will have its own shadow cast underneath there like that just got to put some um, some added branches on there haven't done that yet but just let's just deal with this shadow work first there we go yeah look at that and that depicts a shadow under that tree and the top can be any shape really just to, to show off whatever you feel is um is underneath you know um and of course some of that will come through this side like that um and it will drop down as well don't want it too too stable there yep that gives a lovely sort of subtle feel and while we're there let's get a rigger and put in some um some twigs and branches to support that um, that leafing above. Um, all right, we've got a big trunk area here, so let's let's show. Uh, yeah, that that will probably show a little bit there with the trunk. It'll be too wide at that point, and then of course we'll have a branch coming from that we don't know whether we have but uh, and then it may very well just branch out there like that and obviously the branches get smaller as they come away from the tr the main trunk so that's the way you do your trees just use a little bit of uh, sort of license if you like to you know i'm not I, i've looked at the tree and i've studied the tree but this is by no means a complete depiction of that particular tree i'm just looking to give an impression of a tree in that position so um you know when you learn to paint trees yes you do need to um to start looking a little bit at their shapes and forms but once you know what trees roughly look like um, then you just pick up the main shape good that seems to work quite well right now let's get back to our shadows so we've more or less finished that little tree there um, just make certain that that trunk goes like that good <clears throat> use burnt umber ultramarine and when you put these gates in don't forget about perspective quite a bit of perspective depends on how far open the gate is and perspective on the bars that go across and the reason I put that in I know where I want the shadows now you see so that's the reason that I had to go in early now I'm going to have a shadow cast across here, not too dark at this stage, like that. And of course then you've got the shadow from the gate that goes a little bit further because the light is coming from the left there. So that's a bit of dappled light. Nice just to have another brush to soften areas of this light. 
Yeah. Now if we just put a little bit that side under the gate post there. Just show a little bit of grasses. Uh, we'll leave that as a hard edge that side. So it's hard edge, soft edges. We're playing one against the other to enhance this uh, scene. Right, I'm going to mix ultramarine and cadmium red again. But this time, as we come forward, I'm going to put in a yellow and I'm going to put in cadmium yellow because it will give us a slightly greeny blue which I think will be hopefully quite successful now we have a shadow coming across here that's why that's dark and it will come across there like that over that and just gently across that and and the bit you've got at the top there will demote denote what the shrubs are there and also a little bit there would be useful too just to show that it's coming from a tree out of picture and i'm just going to gently spread that to soften that back edge off but i'm leaving that as another piece of interest and in actual fact if you use the point of the brush or a brush that points you can create grasses <clears throat> like that that then can link up with that to a certain extent nice and subtle not too nothing too it's just trees out of picture you know that's what we're looking to uh, to paint in right with the same mix um, we can be a little bit bolder now so I'm going to go a little bit darker and what I'm going to do I'm going to add a bit more yellow to that because that gives us sort of a greeny grey which will be needed in this foreground so we'll sweep that across make certain you've got plenty of uh, colour on your brush I'm only using a small brush I could have used a larger brush probably should have done I'd advise that you know if you're new use a larger brush um, because that uh, you do need that and a bit more red now and I'm going to sweep that across like that and that then comes into another shadow that's just hitting that so it's these shadows that add a bit of red to that too there we go a bit more red in that fork there we are that's what I'm looking for, that nice red tint in that bottom corner. And of course, if you've got grasses there, you can stand those up within coming out into the shade, the, the sh from the shadow area into the sunlight area. You know, there's all sorts of issues, all sorts of things you can do to enhance your shadows. A bit more blue now, um, <clears throat> because that shadow is going to go across this foreground like that and there again use the point of the brush the underpainting will shine through every time so you know don't think you've lost it because it's still there but we're just creating subtle washes of shadow colour which eventually will light up that foreground, that church and everything else that goes with it. And of course we've got some grasses there. Don't forget to show the tops of your grasses. 
and this shadow could very well just run up there like that gradually get lost into the distance and it's probably from a tree out of picture that's what I'm hoping to depict good let's allow that to dry well I've removed the uh, tape around the edge so we've got a little bit of a frame a bit of a, a square edge for it um, just a couple of other things to do um, obviously I've got to sign it probably sign it in this corner in the shadow um, I did notice that when I was up there um, we had uh, birds in the sky um, I think the pigeons and what have you so I just think a couple would be sufficient I think um, just as a just adds a bit of interest to more or less that sort of area so um, I'm going to uh, more or less around here so let's put one there like that <clears throat> we'll put another one there and put these at slightly different angles so that we're um, they're, f they're flying around at different angles uh, I think that's probably the best way to look at it and one just a little smaller there and that I think is sufficient for this particular painting now all I'm going to do is to sign it bottom right hand corner in my normal signature uh, not being too a uh, little bit discreet on it to be too prominent within the, the watercolor feel in a bit just in case when the client mounts it and frames it it uh, the mount needs to come in a little <coughs> Good. Well, there you have it. Gallywood Church, St. Michael's Gallywood on the Common, um, depicted in all its glory on a summer's morning with the lovely greenery, a little bit of license use, but I think I've given it the feel that it is in a common area that is what I'm looking for. Uh, if you enjoyed that video, please subscribe, click the link. There is a link on the bottom right hand corner as I speak. And if you have, um, please tell others that I'm now demonstrating on YouTube. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all again very, very soon.